Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Okay, so today's class is going to be called The Fear of God. Write that title down, The Fear of God. Let's open up with Romans 3.18. The book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 18. There is no fear of God before their eyes. There is no fear of God before their eyes. That's the reason why we are destroyed as a people. We have left off from fearing God, thus destruction came. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. But we return to the Most High. We have got to get back to understanding our God. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. That's why there's no fear of God, because we have taken the mercy of God for granted. Because he does not, he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance, and he's been long-suffering with us. Our heart has been fully set to do evil as a nation, and we're reaping the judgments of it. We just are blind to see it. We've gotten comfortable in captivity. This is a um, comfortable state of being. We are okay with it, with people telling us where to go, what to do, when to wake up, what to eat, who to vote for, people in the world, who to vote for. We are okay with somebody else running our life as long as we got a, um, a smokescreen uh, illusion of freedom to do it. But you're actually being guided by somebody else, and this cause we lost that fear of God. Give me that in Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, and I want to read verse, I think it's, let's read 1. One through four. Isaiah chapter one and verse one. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amoz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, 
Ahaz and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. They have rebelled against me. Read. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. A lot of times we pull is just using it for identity purposes, but it's actually going into we don't consider what God will do to us if we don't fear him. We don't consider the judgments of God of how he stretches forth his hand and punishes us over millennial. We don't consider that. Read on. Verse 4. A sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. They stopped fearing God. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. And let's read 28 and 29. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 28. There we go. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Mm -hmm. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this. That they would consider their latter end. Oh, that we would consider our latter end. Consider what he would do to us. Give me that in Genesis 6. And let's read verse 5 through 7. Oh, that they were wise. Oh, that they had some wisdom to know who I truly am. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. Yep. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That means that he woke up. Hey, let, what, what evil can I get into today? What can I do to make God mad? Before he went to sleep. Hey, we can't lay down. You know, we got to do our daily ritual. We got to do some evil before we go to sleep. God said their only thought continually was evil. It was no good in them. Read. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Hold on, fix his mic for me. Read it again. Let's see. Verse 6. Read Genesis chapter 6, verse 6. There we go. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. So it, it means he was sorry. He was like, why, why did I even make these people? All right. Read on. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, uh -huh. both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So we did, they didn't consider in the beginning. They did not consider that the evil that they continually had on their mind will, uh, will eventually uh, come due for payment. They did not consider that. Let's jump over to Genesis chapter 7 and let's read 11 on down. Let's read the whole chapter. Verse 11. Genesis chapter 7 verse 11. And the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So when you read in Malachi that the, the windows, you know how Christianity says the windows of heaven be open and rain you down a blessing. This is your precept right here. It's talking about water coming out of the clouds, not money. Read verse 12 again. Genesis chapter 7, verse 12. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Uh -huh. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind, and all the cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and every fowl after his kind, every bird and of every sort. Mm -hmm. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in, and the, Lord, and the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark. And it was lift up above the earth, and the waters prevailed, and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went up upon the face of the waters. So when it says that the great deep was broken up, that's talking about what we would call today tsunamis, earthquakes in the ocean. 
to make the water come up onto the land on top of rain for 40 days straight. Picture this in your head, what's going on right now. A lot of us sleep comfortably right now, right next to the ocean. But if the Lord made an a earthquake in the ocean, we done. If he, if he says, uh, if he takes back the commandment that he gave to the waves that thou cannot pass, it's over for us. We would be just like them that didn't consider in the beginning, that had evil thoughts continually in their mind. Read verse 19. Verse 19. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. So there's nowhere you can, especially in Florida, this is flat land, right? And you know these, they got, these are one-story houses be down here. Done. I was shocked when I came down here. Like, dang, ain't no two-story houses, three-story houses around here? A lot of flat places around here. I had to get used to that. It was new to me. Even when you down, drive down to Key West, you see... Um, you look side by side, you're just above water. Dang. Not too much. Uh, what they call it, below sea below level. Below sea level. So if, if the Lord broke up the great fountains of the deep right now, we would be just like our, our forefathers in the beginning. Uh, read that verse 19 again. Verse 19. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the water prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beast and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. And every man. Read. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fall of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the face from the earth. And Noah only remained alive. And they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth and 150 days. So the Lord made sure that everything would die, that he left it there 150 days. Now, you know, when the sun comes out, what happens to the water? It eventually evaporates. It, the, the sun didn't have no power on the water right now. No, 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 no. Just leave it there to make sure everything dies out. Nobody lives because the thought of evil being continually in their mind. Deuteronomy 5, and let's read verse 29. The reason why we're going over this because um, in our comfortability, we lose the fear of God. You know, with the, um, the, the essentials that Esau provides us, where now, you know, you can just go to Walmart and Costco, Sam Club, those are one-stop shops. You know, you can go there, you can go into your house, you can ride in your car and, you know, just turn on the nice A.C., the cars get better year after year. You get the nice cell phones, the nice clothes. You get relaxed, and you forget the fear of God, of what he can do to you and what he will do to you. And then you begin to revert into the old man, and you, you, you um, are hesitant in change. Read, read verse uh, Deuteronomy 5, 29. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 29. Oh, that there was such an heart in them that they would fear me. And keep all my commandments always. Read it again. Fix his mic. Yo. He need a new mic. All right. Go ahead and read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 29. Oh, that there was such an heart in them that they would fear me. And keep all my commandments always. That it might be well with them and with their children forever. Why would he say that? Oh, that they would fear me. Why would, he, why would we just read that? Precept upon precept. Why would I go there? Show of hands. Let's see. Uh, Soldier Lemuel. He said that he, well, Shalom, happy Sabbath. He said he wished that we would fear him so he wouldn't have to kill us like he did over and over again. There you go. Oh, that they re would remember what I did to them in the beginning. But my people are forgetful hearers as much as I jack him up. They forget over and over again. Oh, that it was in their mind that they would fear me. Give me that in Deuteronomy 31. Let's read verse 11 and 12. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 11. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Gather the people together, men and women and children, 
and thy stranger that is within thy gates. Here's the question. Who did he kill in the beginning? Who did he all kill in the beginning? Did anybody other than Noah survive? And his family, his, uh, his wife, his sons, and their wives, did anybody survive? He killed men, women, and children. Dog, cat, rat, rabbit, the pretty little dove, he killed them all. So this time around, dealing with us this second time, he said, you know what? So I don't have to do that again? Call everybody together, Moses. Read it again. Read verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 11. When all Israel is come to appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, thou shalt read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Read the law. Because that's what their ancestors didn't do, and their thoughts were evil continually. Read on. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates. Even the daggone heathen better know this, what I'm talking about. Read. That they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law, and that their children which have not known anything may hear, and learn to fear the Lord your God, as long as ye live in the land where ye go over Jordan to possess it. Learn to fear. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Learn to fear him. And that's what we have not done as a nation until this day. We have not learned the fear of God. But he wants to make sure that he said, make sure your children learn to fear me. Give me that and uh, jump down to verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land. So we went after religion, uh, Christianity, politics, whatever it might be. We went after the gods of the other people. Read whether they go to be among them and will forsake me and break my covenant which I made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us because our God is not among us? Now here's a question. What's the covenant he made with us coming out of Egypt? What's the covenant he made with us? Soldier Lemuel, what's the covenant? Keep the commandments, you'll be blessed. Don't keep the commandments, you'll curse. All right, keep the commandments. Let's go to Deuteronomy 26. Let's show the covenant he made with us. He said, they will break my covenant and forsake me. Deuteronomy 26, let's read 17 through 19. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 17. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people, as he hath promised thee, and that thou shouldest keep all his commandments, and to make thee high above all nations which he hath made, in praise and in name and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. So the, co the covenant that we made with God is to keep the commandments, right? Um... Now, here's the thing. Here's the question. What's the covenant that he made with us in the beginning? What's the covenant? Let's see. Elhanan, what's the covenant he made with us in the beginning? Um, circumcision with sacrifice. Okay. No, no. That's, that's coming out of Egypt. Anybody else? What's the covenant he made with us in the beginning? Soldier Lemuel again for 200 <laughs> he wanted us to rule the world and teach the commandments or die. Mm. Yeah, brothers. You have to you have to be paying attention. We we'll go off to Luke. We go precept upon precept for a reason. What's the what is the covenant he made with us in the beginning? Not to flood the earth again because uh, of our sins. Nope. Officer Zadok. Last one. It was the same thing, to keep the commandments. Boom, there we go. Re hey, remember what I said? Israel forgets. He got to remind us over and over again, and within five minutes, you forget. That's why you don't fear God. You forget that quick. Proverbs chapter 7.
Let's read verse 1 and 2. We Proverbs are the Israelites, no doubt about it. Read that. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my commandments and live. Remember, in the beginning, he destroyed everything that had breath in it, man, women, child, and beast. He had to have a parameter of judgment to go off of it, off of, to kill him. If he didn't, he would be an unjust guy. This is the covenant he made with us in the beginning. Read verse 1 again. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 1. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. Uh -huh. And my law as the apple of thine eye. The law as the apple of thine eye. That means make it the most precious thing to you. That's what it means when it says, keep my law as the apple of thine eye. This should be the most precious thing in the world to you. Go to Proverbs chapter 4. Let's read 1 through 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Forsake ye not my law. Read. For I was my father's son. Tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Let thy mind retain my commandments and live. Go to Sirach and let's read chapter 9. And let's start, let's read 15 and 16 to show how you would retain the commandments in your mind. Sirach chapter 9 verse 15. Let thy talk be with the wise and all thy communication in the law of the Most High. That's how you retain the commandments. Your conversation got to be in the talk of the Most High. And it's not talking about where your conversation is. What does the fourth commandment say? What does the second commandment say? What does it say in the book of Leviticus? How did the priest sacrifice? It's not talking about like that. It means that a normal conversation you have, it should always go back to the laws of God. Uh, um, you barbershop, you see sports on? Oh, yeah, 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 I see that. Yeah, yeah, LeBron, good. Yep, yep, that's the Greek fashions right there. Boom, going right back to the commandments. Right? Oh, yeah, you got that. You got a good job right there. Yeah, you just got hired on. Yep, all right. But just remember that money can't save you in the end. That's how, your, that's how you retain God's commandments. That's how your talk is with the wise and all thy communication in the law. Some of us be having conversations that is completely worthless and meaningless. It don't add nothing to your life, to your spirit, or to the hearer at all. It's just meaningless chatter. God says, let your talk be with the wise and all thy communication in the law of the Most High. Read on. Verse 16. Verse 16. And let just men eat and drink with thee. Stop right there. Now, it says, let thy talk be in the wise. Keep that coming. And then it says, let just men eat with thee. What? Why is it talking about talking and then it goes into eating? Why would God say that? Let's see who has the wisdom descended upon. Officer Philip. Because uh, normally when you sit down to eat with somebody, that's what y'all doing. Y'all sitting and talking and eating and enjoying each other. Okay. All right. Uh, Soldier Lemuel. That's the surface of it. What do you got? Like possibly going when you're going to, like, to the feast days and having charity for the wise men. Say it again. Like feast days and having charity. Yeah. Like yeah, if you I mean, know, it, like if you know it's, like, for example, if you know leadership going to be there, a wise man who you see to be wise, no, no, you missed thank it. the... You missed it. Uh, back here to Matthias. Because men can't eat off bread alone, but every word of God. Your brothers is deep. The reason why it says it let just men eat with you, the verse before it says let thy talk. What you think they're going to talk about? They're going to be talking about the laws of God. Their communication is going to be with the mo about the most high. You can't sit down and talk with somebody that ain't got nothing in common with you. My mind's focused on uh, raising my people up and, and uh, calling in the elect and, and all of that. And you sitting here talking about the damn stock market. I don't care. What does that got to do with our people? 
talk about trips to France and I, I, man, I don't need to know about that. It said, let just man eat and drink with thee because their communication is going to be just as your communication is. Iron, iron will sharpen what, brothers? There you go. Read that again. Verse 16. Verse 16. And let just men eat and drink with thee, and let thy glorying be in the fear of the Lord. All right. Let's go back to, let's go to 2 Ezra now. Because Ezra explains it in detail. 2 Ezra chapter 3. We're still dealing with the covenant from the beginning. 2 Ezra chapter 3. Let's read one on down. 2 Ezra chapter 3 verse 1. In the thirtieth year after the ruin of the city, I was in Babylon, and lay, and lay troubled upon my bed, and my thoughts came up over my heart. For I saw the desolation of Zion, and the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon, and my spirit was sore moved, so that I began to speak words full of fear to the Most High, and said, O Lord, who bearest rule, thou spakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth, and that thyself alone, and commandest the people, and gave us a body unto Adam without soul, mm -hmm. which was the workmanship of thine hands. And did breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. So what was the breath of life that he gave Adam? What was it, brothers? Oh. The laws, the commandments. Read on. And thou ledest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted, before ever the earth came forward. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. Gave him commandment to love thy way. Read on. Which he transgressed. And immediately thou appointed death in him and in his generation, of whom came nations and tribes, people and kindreds out of number. Uh -huh. And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. That's the precept to let you know they had the commandments in the beginning. That's why God said their thought was only evil continually. How would they know what was right from wrong if they didn't have a parameter of what is good and what is bad? He said, man, these dudes, they don't care nothing about the law. They don't fear me no more. Read on. Verse 9. And again in process of time, Thou broughtest the flood upon those that dwelt in the world, and destroyedest them. And it came to pass in, ev in every of them, that as death was to Adam, so was the flood to these. So was the flood to these. Read on. Nevertheless, one of them thou leftest, namely Noah with his household, of whom came all righteous men. And it happened that when they dwelt upon the earth, began to multiply, and had gotten them many children, and were a great people, they began again to be more ungodly than the first. We were worse than the first. We was worse than the ones in the beginning. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 31. This is why he did what he did or how he dealt with us the second time around. Deuteronomy 31, let's read 12 and 13. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 12. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gates that they may hear and that they may learn and fear the Lord your God and observe to do all the commandments of this law and that their children which have not known anything may hear and learn to fear the Lord your God as long as ye live in the land where ye go over Jordan to possess Get it. Get everybody together and make sure they fear me this go round. I'm not taking no chances. They spread it. Before they even go into the promised land, make sure everybody knows how I get down because they don't remember. They've been 400 years in bondage. They forgot who they was. I got to rebuild them up, but make sure they fear me where they go. Verse 16. Verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and, and go a whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whether they go to be among them and will forsake me, and break my covenant which I have made with them. What's the covenant he made with his brothers? To keep what? The commandments, the laws. Read. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? Read. And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they have wrought. And in that they are turned in, unto other gods. So we, we have not learned with the, the 
covenant that we are um, bound to, we have not learned that we are held to a higher standard as a people. We have not learned that as a nation yet. That's why we don't feel because because we think we can do what other people do and God is OK with it. He is not OK with it. We are held to a higher standard at, in every point of our life. When you wake up, when you go to sleep, the way you deal with each other, the way you deal with your wife, with your husband, the way you raise your kids, it is held to a different and higher standard. It's held to the divine standard of God. Everybody else gotta, just got to live up to the standards of society, the way things are at that particular time. Yours go way back. they ancient. Uh, jump over to verse 28. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 28. Gather unto me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears and call heaven and earth to record against them. For I know that after my death you will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days. In the latter days. Read. Because ye will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. And so that's, that's it right there. So that... 28, 29 explains police brutality, uh, redlining, name some other stuff. Jim Crow, low-paying jobs, colonialism, slavery, gentrification. That right there explains. If you ever want to know what's the plight of the black man and black woman, Hispanic man, Hispanic woman, why we in there, is because we left off fearing God and went after other gods. And that God might not be uh, in religion. It might be uh, whatever vice that is in you that you love. That's a God, too. Go to Deuteronomy chapter uh, 32 now, and let's read verse 1 on down. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 1. Give air, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. What's doctrine? Is what? What is it, brothers? The laws, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. It said, it shall drop as rain. It will cover the whole earth. Read on. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Go to Hosea 14. Let's read 5 through 7. It means it will be a blessing. Let's read that. Hosea 14. Let's read 5 through 7. Hosea chapter 14, verse 5. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. His branches shall spread and his beauty shall be as the olive tree and his smell as Le Lebanon. They that dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall revive as the corn and grow as the vine. The scent thereof shall be as the wine of Lebanon. So that's what it's talking about. They will be, it will be a blessing to Israel. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2. Yep. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. Cover my the whole earth. Read. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. So it shall be a blessing to Israel. Read. Because I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Uh -huh. He is the rock. He is the rock. 2 Samuel 22. Verse 3, he is the rock. Read it when you get it. Second Samuel chapter 22, verse 3. The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of our God. And he shall be as the light of the morning. Okay, that's it. Just verse 3. Read it again. 2 Samuel chapter 23, verse 3. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Ruling in the fear of God. Now jump over to 22, verse 3. 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 3. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield. And the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 32. So he is the rock, is the God of Israel. Read that. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4 again. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4. 
He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Uh -huh. Do ye thus. Do ye thus. Requite the Lord. Oh, hold, hold on. Get, can we get a good mic? Good mic. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 6. Yep. Do ye thus. Requite the Lord. O foolish people and unwise. Is not he thy father that hath bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Requite means to repay. Is this how you repay God for what he has done for him choosing you and making you above all people? The best thing on the first face of the earth. Is this how you repay God? Read on. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father and he will show thee. Thy elders and they will tell thee. So what days, what, when he says remember the days of old, what is he talking about? Just say it. The flood. Remember that. Remember them days of old. Uh, give me Job. And let's go to chapter 22. Let's ask our father Job about the days of old. Job 22, 15 through 17. Job chapter 22, verse 15. Hast thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden? Have thou marked the old way which wicked men have walked? Have you thought about that? Read. Which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood. Overflown with a what? With a flood. That's why I was talking about. God said, he, that's what, when he said, remember the days of old? Remember that time when I killed everybody. I ain't talking about yesterday. I'm talking about when I, when I was so mad that it, you know what? I'm just going to kill everything. The damn pig, the damn horse didn't even do nothing. I'm going to kill it too. <laughs> Because man done did evil with them too. Read that again. Verse 15. Job chapter 22 verse 15. Hast thou marked the old way which men, wicked men have trodden? Which were cut down out of time. Whose foundation was overflowed with a flood. Which said unto God. Depart from us. And what can the almighty do for them? So that's what they said. That's why they was overthrown. That's why their thoughts were evil continually. So what can God do for me? What benefit is it in me fearing God? Let me live it up. Uh, now let's go to where we leave. Yeah, go back to Deuteronomy 32. Let's read that. Verse 7 again. Deuteronomy okay. chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. So Job just told us. Have you have you thought about the way that uh, how the wicked man walked and they was overthrown with that flood? Read on. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Uh huh. And why did he do that? Read. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Uh huh. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. He kept him as the apple of his eye. The apple of his eye means what? It's the most what? Precious thing to you. He said, Israel's mine. They the most precious thing on the earth to me. So what happens when something's precious? What do you do to it? Give me that in Sirach chapter 17. Let's read verse 17. On down. Sirach chapter 17, verse 17. For in the divisions of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the Lord's portion. But Israel is the Lord's portion because they are the apple of his eye, the most important thing. Read. Whom being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline and giving him the light of his love doth not forsake him. Uh -huh. Therefore, all their works here are as the sun before him. And his eyes are continually upon their ways. His eyes are continually upon their ways because they are precious to me. Read. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him, but all their sins are before the Lord. It but says none of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him. Nothing. None of them. Go to Job chapter 34. Let's read 21 and 22. 
Job chapter 34, verse 21. For his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. Well, his eyes are upon the ways of the Israelite man, the Israelite woman. He sees all his goings. Read. There is no, no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. There's nowhere we can hide ourselves. Go to Job 31, verse 4. Job chapter 31, verse 4. Doth not he see my ways? Does not he see my ways? Read. And count all my steps? He counts all my steps. The apple of his eye. He, how many steps? How, you know how uh, some of y'all be trying to burn the fat and you got that little, uh, that counter? Is it what you got on your wish? <laughs> uh, Officer Tobias got one right there. How many steps I take today? That's the same way the Lord deal with you. He know how many steps you took today. Read it again, verse 4. Job chapter 31, verse 4. Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? Go to Proverbs 15 and 3. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. It's in every place beholding the evil and the good that we do. Go to 2 Ezra 16. You can't hide from it. Count your steps. He beholds all your ways. 2 Ezra 16. Let's read 61 through 63. 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 61. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him breath. Life and understanding. What was that that he gave him? To sum up verse 61, he gave him what, brothers? The laws and the commandments. Read. Yea, and the spirit of almighty God, which ha made all things and searcheth out all hidden things in the secrets of the earth. Surely he knoweth your invention. He knows your inventions. And what ye think in your hearts. What ye think in your mind. Read. Even them that sin and would hide their sin. You can't hide. Even those that would think to hide their sin. He knows what you think. Surely your sin will find you out. He count your steps. You're the most precious thing to him. He nourishes you with discipline. What makes you think you're going to uh, get away with sin? Give me Ezekiel. Is that what I want right now? No, we're going to wait on that. Give me Sirach 16, 17. With all of that, being said, there's no, you can't even hide in the grave from him, right? This is what those that don't believe say to themselves. Sirach 16, 17. Sirach chapter 16, verse 17. Say not thou, I will hide myself from the Lord. This is what the unbeliever says. <laughs> you can't hide in the grave. He counts your steps. The hairs of your head are numbered. And, you, and the unbeliever will say to him, he says, what does that say again? Say not thou, I will hide myself from the Lord. I'm going to hide from God. I'm going to do this in secret. Read on. Shall any remember me from above? I shall not be remembered among so many people. I know it's about, what did the current census say? The current census sentence, sentence said it's about six or seven billion people. And I know it's a whole lot of black people in America and in the islands. I know the Lord ain't paying attention to me. Read. For what is my soul among such an infinite number of creatures? Behold. Okay, that's it. Go to um, Sirach chapter 5. And let's read 4 through 6. So you might, that's what the unbeliever will say to him. Hey, hey, man, God ain't worried about me. I'm just one person on the earth. Here's one that, this is what the person that believes will say to thyself. On the flip side, read that. Sirach chapter 5 verse 4. Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? The believer, the, the one that don't, um, he believes, but he don't fear God. He said, ah, look, I got away. I got away with it. Look what I've done, and no harm has happened unto me. But what did it say in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11? It said the sentence of every evil work is not judged immediately, therefore, it is set in the heart of man to do wickedly. Read that again, verse 4. Sirach chapter 5, verse 4. 
Say not, I have sinned, and what harm hath happened unto me? This is you in here, because you know. In order for you to say sin, you know the what, brothers? Read. For the Lord is long-suffering. He will in no wise let thee go. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Propitiation is mercy. Concerning mercy and forgiveness and long-suffering from the Most High. Don't be af uh, afraid to not add sin to sin. Read on. And say not, his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him. Mercy and wrath come from him. Read. And his indignation rested upon sinners. So what happens if they choose not to have the fear of God? Read verse 7. Verse 7. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. Thou shalt be destroyed. Read. And perish in the day of vengeance. That's why God says man does not know his day. You don't know your day. You don't know it. Go back to Sir go to Sirach 16, and let's read verse 11. How that God is, is we are so precious in the apple of his eye, and he watches everything we do. Uh, Sirach marveled he said if he don't get jacked up it's a i marvel at that reverse uh sirach 16 verse 11 sirach chapter 16 verse 11 and if there be one stiff necked among the people it is marvel if he escape pun unpunished for mercy and wrath are with him he is mighty to forgive and to pour out displeasure read and his mercy is great as his mercy as his mercy is great so is his correction also he judgeth a man according to his works. It's, he marveled. He said, surely, Sirach knew, surely your sin going to find you out. If that dude don't get jacked up, it's a marvel that God allowed that to happen. It's a marvel that God allowed that to happen. Go to Psalms 90. Psalms 90 and read 7 and 8. Psalms chapter 90 verse 7. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquity. It, say, it says, we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. God is angry with us, especially when we're in the midst of sin. Especially when you know better and you don't. What, brothers? Do better. Read verse 8. Verse 8. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee. Our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Our secret sins, he even know. Even the ones that are in your mind. Yes. God knows the sins that you think about in your mind and will jack you up for them. Ezekiel 11, 4 and 5. Is it proof of that? Am I just spewing stuff out my mouth to make it try to sound good? Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 4 and 5. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 4. Therefore prophesy against them. Prophesy, O son of man. Uh -huh. And the spirit of the Lord fell upon me and said unto me, Speak, thus saith the Lord. Thus have ye said, O house of Israel. O house of Israel. For I know the things that come into your mind. I know the things that come into your mind. Read. Every one of them. Some of them. Every one of them. Only on Mondays. Every one of them. Only when I'm here at the Sabbath. Every one of them. God knows every single thought in your mind. You can't even hide those from him. Deuteronomy 32 and 10. Let's go back to it. Deuteronomy yeah, hold on, chapter. Hold on, go ahead. Go no, ahead. that's why even Christ, he never he didn't even uh, gather with some brothers because he knew the wickedness of their hearts. That's what it said in um what Matthews. Yep, exactly right. Deuteronomy 32 and 10. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 10. He found him in a desert land, and in the waste howling wilderness, he led him about. And in, he instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. And so that he kept you as the apple of his eye. He know your steps. He know your thoughts. You can't hide sin from God. So it's best you just fear God and not sin. Go to Ecclesiastes 8. Let's read 12 and 13. 
Read it when you get it. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 12. Though a sinner do evil an hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God. It's well with them that fear God. Read. Which fear before him. Which fear before him. Read. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Read that again, verse 13. Verse 13. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before God. Because he feareth not God. It's well with those that fear God. But those that don't fear God, you know what he's going to do? He's going to take back the life that he that he let you borrow. A lot of us forget that you are on borrowed time. Every breath you take belongs to him. Your heart beating, it ain't nothing you doing. Half y'all eat bad anyway. <laughs> Half y'all eat fast food every single day, every other day. You think it's you that keeping your heart beating? You out your mind. You think you God. And therefore, your fear of God ceases. Give me that in Ecclesiastes, um, what I want, 12 and 7 to show you. It ain't your life. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave Read it. Read that again. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. It goes back to God who gave it to you. Don't do what he wants you to do. Think you can hide your secret sins. Think you can hide the sins in your mind. He's going to take it back and take it right back to him. He's going to judge it and then he's going to send you back in a wheelchair. That's what he's going to do to you. Um, you got the precept for me. Was it that? Psalms? Yeah, Psalms 119 and 120. Psalms 119. Let's go to that. Psalms chapter 119, verse 120. Yep. My flesh trembleth before fear of thee. And well, I am this is what, this is my flesh trembleth for the fear of thee. Why should you fear God? Fear what? What does it mean? Read. And I am afraid of thy judgment. That's what he means. Because he can judge you. That's why it'd be well with you than it will with a sinner. Fear, David feared the judgments of God. And God, what well, David was a man that God, that uh, he said, he's a man after my own heart. That ain't us. We didn't got that kind of relationship with the Most High. None of us in here got a personal relationship to think he going to let your sin go by and not reveal it. Hell, he judged David for his sin. Killed his son. Put him on the run. Go to... Um, Proverbs 8 and 13. What is the fear of the Lord? What does that truly mean? Proverbs chapter 8 verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Another word for evil is what, brothers? Sin. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Read. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth. Do I hate? Do God hate? God hates it. Now let's deal with that pride real quick. Let's deal with the pride of the fear of the Lord. Go to Sirach chapter 10. And let's read 12 and 13. Sirach chapter 10 verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departeth from God. So that's the beginning of pride. That's what God said, I hate. When Pride is when, when you begin to depart from God. Read. And his heart is turned away from his maker. For pride is the beginning of sin. It's the beginning of sin. Read. And he that hath it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought up upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. So your mind begins to depart from God. You go and do your own thing instead of God's way. That's what pride is. God said, I hate that. I hate it. And go to Deuteronomy. Uh, is that what I want? Nope. Jump down to verse 18 first. Sirach chapter 10, verse 18. Pride was not made for men. Pride nor, is not made for the Israelite man. It's not made for you. Read. 
nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman. Go to Deuteronomy 20, and let's read verse 30 to show you why pride is not made for Israelite man. What verse, Cap? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey on, his read voice. It, read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou, thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. For he's what? For he is thy life. You cleave unto God, for he is thy life. As I said earlier, he's the reason why you got breath in your body. You blink your eyes. You was able to get from point A to B on the Sabbath day safely. A lot of us don't even think. I was thinking about this driving the other day. This is how much that um, we have to cleave unto the Lord. We do not realize and understand the danger that is all around us. How many in here take the highway by show of hands? Everybody takes the highway, right? You know what we never do on the highway? We never look up when we go under an overpass. The bridges. I thought to myself, damn, you know how much danger it is for these cars to be passing over top of us as we going through? What happens if they lose control over top? We never think about that stuff. We ride on the highway without a care in the world, but it's the Lord that keeps uh, that car from going over the damn uh, ridge and landing right on you. That's God that does that. We don't think about that kind of stuff. I think about it. I fear God. I still got some work to do, but I ain't going to try. Him. I got secrets. Lord, Lord, I got sins. Please forgive me for me. Forgive me, forgive me for him. Whatever it is that I don't know I'm doing, don't let that car go over top of that bridge and fall on me as I'm going under the overpass because I think it's all good and clear on the daggone turnpike. The, <laughs> the, what they call the turnpike, the less stress way. Less stress way. Go ahead, officer. Hey, Cap, I'll be the one driving, you know, on a turn. You know how it goes, real sharp turn? Yeah. And then you could go over and there's another highway there? Yeah. I'll be the one, Lord, don't let my car go over. Yeah. I'll be speeding, too. And it, yeah. it tells you, hey, so I bet, Lord, you're going to guide me. Lord, take the wheel. I'll be like, I'll be scared. Right. That's my prayer every time. I'm driving because I'm one of the main drivers at my job. And that's my prayer. Lord, please don't let this thing roll over. Right. Please. Be like a hundred ways to die. Probably want to get one of the sinners in the back. <laughs> yeah. No, you're going to have to take this L. I'm gonna, I need that one right there. He's on my list. Lord, Please, I, Lord. I, Lord, I fear you. Please don't judge me with a car on top of my head. Please don't let that, uh, as I'm driving, this is what a lot of us don't think about either. Please don't let that car... Um, swerve, hit another car, make it flip on the highway, and it just somehow rolls back and jumps on top of my car. We don't think about that. Hey, go to the uh, Sabbath class real quick. Officer Azanai sent me some pictures of something that happened today. Hey, another thing, Cap, I, you know, some, I, some of you know I'm a technician, so I have, like, a lot of pipes on top of my vehicle. I'll be praying and say, Lord, if I hit the brakes, Please don't let it go through nobody's windshield. I yeah. kill somebody. I said, Lord, oh, I'll, be, I'll be behind another car that's a plumber. And they have a lot of pots. I said, yeah. Lord, oh, if you, yeah, the final destination. Yeah, man, it I'm can happen. You. Pull up those pictures if you got them in the Sabbath class. That happened today. That's the sheets to cover up somebody that was halfway leaning out their car. Today. Yeah, they did. White sheets mean death. That's the things we don't think about. Go back to Deuteronomy 30, verse 20. You got something else to buy? Us? Give him the mic real quick. Make sure it's on. Yeah, I was just thinking about the other night at camp. As they was teaching, that car that got in an accident, it could have slid right, right into the whole camp. Yeah, and wiped sis, out everybody. You know, sis, some of these brothers and sisters don't know. After a teacher at camp. They get everybody back turned, Soldier Paul and them teaching. All you hear is boom, eh! car sliding towards them, and all of a sudden comes to an instant stop. What do you think it was? It was the angels of God. <laughs> nope, right there. That's it. It could have kept going. It stopped immediately. It slid eh! and stopped. 
didn't go no further. But all you heard in the background was boom, and it stopped. That's God. Right? And, uh, in Broward? Right after you packed up and left, we was packing up the, um, the camp equipment. Car swerved almost on the sidewalk to, to avoid an accident that was in the midsection. And, uh, in the Could have hit anybody on the sidewalk. Deuteronomy 30, 20. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham. Is to that I it? I just want verse 20. That's it on verse 20? No, sir. Okay, read. Which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. All right, so that's what we got. We got to cleave. Go back to Sirach chapter 10, verse 18. Read that again. Cleave to the Lord. He is your life. Sirach chapter 10 verse 18, pride was not made for men, nor, fury, nor furious anger for them that are born of a woman. So it says pride is not made for an Israelite man because he is your life. Jump up to verse 9. Sirach chapter 10 verse 9, why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. A covetous man will separate himself from God to go after his own lust. That's a covetous man. You separate from God to go after your own lust. Read. For such an one set of his own soul to sail, because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. He sell his own self for sale. Who you think he's selling his soul to? Who is it, brothers? The devil. He's selling his soul, because if you're not attached or connected to God... Well, who else are you getting your life, your breath? Who's that coming from? It's coming from the devil. The Lord's just having mercy on you enough to either do two things, re uh, to repent and turn away or confess those things. He waiting on you to do that. But you take too long, I got something for you. You want to go after weed? You want to go after uh, fornication, drugs? Uh, adultery, ungodly money, whatever it might be. If that, if you want to separate yourself from God and go after those things, He'll judge you for them. Cause you're dealing with the devil now. Deuteronomy 32. Let's go back to that. Let's read 10 on down. Deuteronomy chapter 32, Mike, verse Mike, 10. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 10. He found him in a desert land and in, in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. The most precious thing to him. Read on. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, buried, buried them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him. That means he blessed us. Read. And there was no strange God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock, butter of kine, and the milk of sheep, with fat of lambs, and the rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of the kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. We had the best of everything from God. The best of everything on the earth. But what does Israel do? Read on. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. We forgot the fear of God. We got comfortable. We got comfortable with having everything provided from us, from God, for us, from God. And then we left off fearing God. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Hey, hey, Cap. Yeah. Um you know, it's funny you said that because I was, you know, was going through the Telegram chat. We've seen what's going on in the islands, those that depend on tourism for, um, for work. But I posted the chat, Israel, Israel never remembers God when their bellies are full. Right. They never remember. And, uh, when you're saying that God provided everything, if you look at the history of um, Jerusalem, they said that they had the best wine. Mm -hmm. They said in that land, 
when we were ruling it, there was more wine than water. Dang. Because the, um, the abundance of grapes was so much, they produced more. It's in that Bible, in that um, Bible Atlas book. Yeah. It says that the land of Israel had more wine than water. The pure blood of the grape is yeah. what God called it. That's that, that straight. So those things cause us, you know, we had so much of abundance. You read that in Deuteronomy, it says, and when thou gettest gold yeah. and houses, and you forget the Lord. There you go. That was it. Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Read on. Thou art waxen fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him. He forgot to fear God. He separated himself from God. He became full of pride and thought it was him that actually woke himself up in the morning. Thought it was him that got himself that job. Thought it was that uh, it was uh, uh, him that actually uh, spared his life during that, that um, ordeal on the corner. When the gun was in your face. You thought it was you talking with your little stupid slick talk. You thought you talked your way out of that. That wasn't you. He forsook God. Read. And lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God. To gods whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up. That's religion. Go ahead. Whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful. And hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them. He abhorred them. Read. Because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. Now, it's how uh, it, the... the um, the prophecy that we just got right here sounds exactly uh, what was going down in the beginning before he flooded it. But this time he said, you know, because he made it, he he uh, he laid his word down. He swore that he wouldn't destroy living flesh by what by what means, brothers? Water. By water. He said, I ain't gonna kill him by water this time. I ain't gonna do it. I, I said it in the beginning. I promised it to Noah. I cannot lie. You know what? Maybe they'll learn if I put them in the hardest bondage of slavery that has ever been on the face of the earth. You think Israel learned from that? Hell no. That wasn't nothing. <laughs> we forgot all about that. Can't tell Negroes that, they is, that uh, we've been in slavery and we still in slavery. It's just changed forms. Can't tell it. We forget. We unmindful of God. Yeah, you, you hear that camp. You know, you try to say no off. Oh. You try to bring Deuteronomy twenty eight sixty eight. They said, "No, I, I wasn't in slavery." Right. I I, I never made you no slavery. And know, I got a good job. I work at this place, that place. My my bank account is what full right. of money. Amazing. Go to Proverbs eight thirteen again. I don't want us to forget. We went there because we was dealing with pride. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. That's if you separate from God and go do your own thing. Read that. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. And do I hate. Go to Proverbs 3, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Don't go after your own lust, your own covetousness. Be not wise in thine own eyes to think you can actually survive without God. Read it again. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Fear the Lord and depart from evil because he sees it all. Only reason you're not getting judged immediately out of your evil is because he's giving you space and time to change, to repent from it, hoping you will learn. Go to um, Proverbs 10, 27. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 27. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Read it again. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. They shall be shortened. You'll be judged for it. But the fear of the Lord will prolong your days. Long life, right? Give me that, Sirach 33. 
and verse 1. All of us want to live a long life, healthy life. God forbid that we end up living a long life and it's filled of sickness. Peels all your life and then the back and forth in and out of the hospital or surgery. One year, you good for six months. You got another surgery. Good for a year. And then you got a surgery two years later. Your body's all cut up. You just barely hang it on. Waiting on God to kill you. Waiting on life to end. But you don't have to worry about that if you apply the fear of God. Read that. Sirach chapter 33 verse 1. There shall no evil happen unto him that feareth the Lord. It'll prolong your days. You won't have to look over your shoulder at late nights. Read it again. There shall no evil happen unto him that feareth the Lord. But in temptation, even again, he will deliver him. He'll deliver you. Jump over to Sirach 34. Let's read 13 and 14. Sirach chapter 34, verse 13. The spirit of those that fear the Lord shall live. The spirit of the Lord uh, that fear the Lord shall live. Read. For their hope is in him that saveth uh -huh. them. Whoso feareth the Lord shall not fear, not fear nor be afraid. For he is his hope. For God is your hope. You won't have to be afraid. Now go back to uh, Proverbs chapter, let me see. No, go to 1 John 2. Give me that 1 John chapter 2. And let's read verse 15. It'll prolong your days if you fear God. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15. But this is the thought you should have while you are here in this world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. The things that are in the world. The lust, the fornication, the weed, the adultery, the porn. Love the things that, uh, uh, love not the things that are in the world. But on, you know, on the flip side, this is what uh, the world does to you. They make you love it so much that you are afraid to let it go, that you can't live without it. You can live without weed. You can live without being a whoremonger. You, you ain't got to be the richest man in the world. Solomon said, don't give me too much or feed me with too less. Just give me enough convenient. But this world will make you want more and more and more and more of it, and you don't never feel successful. That's why they have uh, what they call buffets. Right. You, all you can eat. Man. Go all out. Don't stop. Keep that, eating. That's the glutton's heaven. There you, that's the glutton's heaven. Read that again, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in the him. The love of the Father ain't in you. You lying to yourself. Read. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Read. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So the fear of, Lord, of the Lord will, will keep you from departing from God because you already hate the world anyway. And ain't nothing but full of evil. The fear of the Lord will keep you uh, cleaving unto him because you don't want nothing in the world anyway. I already got my mind set on heavenly places. Whether I, I see it in this life or I'm woken up, but I do believe and have faith. I'm not a faithless generation like my forefathers was. I'm going to fear God and endure to the end. Let's go to um, Proverbs 14, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 27. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. It'll keep you from death. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life to keep you from death. It'll prolong your days. Uh, go to Sirach chapter 10. And let's read what I got. 19 and 20 now. Sirach chapter 10 verse 19. So the fear of the Lord will deliver you from death. Let's read that. They that fear the Lord are a sure seed. They are sure seed. Let me make sure what I got there. They that are a sure that means that you are guaranteed to make the kingdom. You're doing what is required of you. 
you're sure, see, you're doing exactly what God created you to do, which is to keep the commandments and live. You're sure, seed. Read. And they that love him an honorable plant, they that regard not the law are a dishonorable seed. A dishonorable seed. You are not doing what God created you to do. You are a dishonorable seed. It repented him that he even made you. Read on. They that transgress the commandments are a deceivable seed. Are a deceivable seed. Read on. Among brethren, he that is chief is honorable. So are they that fear the Lord in his eyes. So, yeah, you might have those that are uh, at the top. The chief is the one at the top. Yeah, you honorable among brethren. Those look, uh, they look at you like, look, how, look at where he's at. He's honorable. Look at the title he got. But the same goes for the lowliest man in the back that fears God in the eyes of the Lord. You just as uh, precious in his eyes, in God's eyes, as the chief man is. Read on. Verse 21. The fear of the Lord goeth before the obtaining of authority. Now, if you want, if you want to obtain authority to become a leader in the nation of Israel, you must fear God first. You must hate evil. Must hate pride. The forward mouth. If you don't hate evil, pride, read on. But roughness and pride is the losing thereof. You'll lose that position that God gave you. Because you can't hide your sin. It's only so long that you can uh, uh, dwell in it before he's like, it's, a it's enough is enough. He's a, he's a deceivable seed. He can't lead these people. He's telling them not to do this, not to do that, but he's doing it himself in secret. He's a deceivable seed, casting down. And Lord's will, he'll rise back up. Read that again, verse 21. Verse 21. The fear of the Lord goeth before the obtaining of authority, but roughness and pride is the losing thereof. Now, and, and when it comes to roughness, understand it's the difference of being rough with the people that's around you because you got a position of leadership, and it's a difference in austereness. Understand the two when you are a leader, because if you are rough, Guess what's coming? The losing of that authority. It's a difference in being austere and being rough with the brothers around you and the sisters. Read on. Verse 22. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their glory is in the fear of the Lord. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, glory in the fear of the Lord. Read on. It is not meet to despise the poor man that hath understanding. Neither it is, is it convenient to magnify a sinful man. Great men. That's what America does right now with Trump. That's Trump right there. What, read that again. Verse 23. Sirach chapter 10 verse 23. It is not meet to despise the poor man that hath understanding. That's us right here. We the poor man that got understanding. We are despised in the world's eyes. Read on. Neither is it convenient to magnify a sinful man. That's what America does. They magnify the sinful man. Those that don't fear God and hate evil, they magnify them. They give them a show. They'll give them the, the uh, uh, six-figure deal. But none of them are as great as the man that fears God. Read on. Verse 24. Great men. And judges and potentates shall be honored. Yet is there none of them greater than he that feared the Lord. No matter what name they got, no matter how much the world sets them on a pedestal, none of them are greater than the man that fear, that hates evil and fears God. You're greater than all of them. Because the, what does it say? Give me that in Luke 16 and verse 15 about the greatness, the great man, the judges, the potentates that are honored in this world. Luke chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, uh -huh. but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men... The is, great man, the judges, the potentates, read... Is abomination in the sight of God. Because none of them fear the Lord. It's an abomination. Let's go to Sirach chapter 2. Let's read verse 7 through 9. Sirach chapter 2, verse 7. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. That's us. We fear God. We hate evil. 
wait for his mercy to come. Read. And go not aside lest he fall. Don't separate from God. Read that again. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest he fall. Don't separate from God in your pride and go after your own covetousness. And lest ye fall. Because it will happen. It's going to come. You are going to fall. But he's only doing that so that he can bring you back. So you can understand your wrongdoing and get back up. It says, uh, what does it say, Proverbs 24, that a righteous man falls seven times, but he does what, brothers? He get back up. But preventative medicine is fear the Lord so you don't fall. Read on. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Read on. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look, read, hold on, read it again. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Jump down to verse 15. Sirach chapter 2 verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. If you fear God, you won't disobey the word, and you'll keep his ways as best you can. If you need help to keep his ways, you'll seek counsel. Read on. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him. Uh -huh. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. They that fear the Lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight, saying, We will fall into the hands of the Lord and not into the hands of men. For as his majesty is, so is his mercy. So his mercy is great, but one thing we can't do in this generation is take it for granted. That's what they did in the beginning. They took his mercy for granted. That's what we did when we came out of uh, Egypt. We took his mercy for granted. We abused it. Go to Psalms chapter 2. Let's read verse 11. Psalms chapter 2 verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Read it again. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. When you come in here, serve the Lord. When you leave here, serve the Lord. But it better be in fear. Rejoice in trembling because of what? Go back to Psalms 119 again. What was the verse 23 you think it was? 120. Psalms chapter 119 verse 1. This is one. why you rejoice with trembling. Read. Psalms chapter 119 verse 120. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. You rejoice in trembling because you know you can be judged at any time. If your name, if your angel takes your name before the Most High, and it's a report of wickedness, you will be judged. It might not be death. He might hit you with a sickness here little disease there, little casting down, lost your job here, little trouble in the flesh here. All of that is to whip you back in shape. But we want to escape the, the uh, ultimate judgment of where, you know what, the list is too long. His thoughts is only evil continually. You might as well kill him, take him off the earth so he don't ruin nobody else around him. Read that again, Psalms 2 and 11. Psalms chapter 2, verse 11. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Rejoice with trembling. Go to 2 Peter. Let's read chapter 3, verse 8 on down. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. He don't dwell in time. Read on. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Some men count slackness. That's, what, that's why you lose the fear of the Lord and you go after your own lust. You count God is slackness. Oh, he's been gone for so long. He, he, he ain't um, dropping fire down from heaven no more. He ain't splitting the Red Sea no more. You count it as slackness. You think God took a day off on his job. Read, but is long suffering to us. He's long suffering to all of us in Israel. Read, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Read, but the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night, 
in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these shall all these things shall be dissolved. Seeing means if you believe these things, you know these things, you have faith in these things. You you have counted the way of how the wicked uh treaded in the past and was overthrown with the flood. Read. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy? Shouldn't you walk in the fear of God? If you see these things, you know it. You know God ain't slack. Hell, I mean, you can look at our life. It's a living testament that God has judged us. He has, uh, what it says in Daniel 9, 9, he has confirmed his words. Knowing that. Read verse 11 again. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be? In Shouldn't all you walk in the fear of God? Read. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? In holy conversation and godliness. That conversation is going into conduct. Whether it be amongst the body or if it's by yourself. When you're driving to work, you're coming home from work. Or you go to the corner store. Or the wife goes out of town. Or the husband goes out of town. You should always be in the uh, conduct of holy and godliness. Read on. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Uh -huh. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace. Be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace. Read on. Without spot. Without spot. And blameless. Without sin. No, God, when God lays out your track record of your life, it'll be a book full of righteousness. That's why Nehemiah said, oh Lord, remember me for all the good that I have done for these people. Nehemiah book of life get laid out. He's going to be judged worthy. Enter in to the kingdom through the gates. My uh, uh, son, my good and faithful servant. Well done. Go to Haggai 1 and 5. If that be the case. Haggai 1 and 5. Haggai chapter 1 verse 5. Now therefore thus say the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. Consider your ways. Do what? Consider your ways. Do what? Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Don't be like your forefathers in the beginning that was overthrown with the flood. Don't be like your ancestors that came out of Egypt that didn't consider the fear of God. And walked after their own lust until they was destroyed. Read it again. Haggai chapter 1 verse 5. Now therefore thus say the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Do you walk in the fear of God? We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.